So if you've got a phone, I want you to take it out and hold it up. Cool. That's lots of us. That's almost all of us. OK, these things make us magicians. At any time, from anywhere in the world, we can know almost anything that is known to mankind. But what's truly extraordinary about these devices is that this man has one too. He gets stock updates on his, but his remind him to check his cows for diseases. Sometimes he tweets his local vet, shares information with other local farmers. He also knows the local and international market price for his produce. And when you buy from him, you can pay him by SMS. There are 650 million people with mobile phones in sub-Saharan Africa. And even though only half of them have access to clean water and sanitation, they all have better mobile access to more information than Bill Clinton did when he was president. Today, I want to tell you what that means, how food is an excellent place to change the world, and how connected data can help us work more intelligently together rather than ever harder against each other. Everything is secondary to food. If we make a change here, everything else changes. It is the most important thing that we do and yet it is also our most environmentally impactful activity. It keeps us alive, and yet it is the biggest cause of premature deaths amongst humans and the biggest driver of extinctions amongst, amongst other species that we have. It strives to be ever cheaper, but as Prince Charles was saying on Monday, it ends up costing nothing less than the Earth. However, because of all these things, if we get it right, it can be the fastest and most effective way of changing the world that we have and leading to, to uh, sustainable, lasting, equitable societies. There's a phrase in farming, if you take care of the soil, the plants will take care of themselves. That's true of society too. If we have the right environment in which to thrive, if we have the right conditions, we will prosper. If we have the knowledge to know what to do and the structures to help us grow, we will work at all the different levels and scales to create a truly abundant society. The biggest challenge of our times is to make the most effective use of the resources that we have available to us, to find and generate those upward and uh, generative spirals that create cascading multipliers that ch make changes not only in our air and our soil and our water, but also in our societies to create health and abundance and, and oh, sorry, health and, and fair and uh, fulfilling livelihoods. Food is one of these multipliers. There's a local science journalist called Colin Tudge who coined this excellent phrase, good food for everyone forever. And to me, that seems like a hell of an ambition. In fact, it's in our, our articles of association. And I want to take a moment to consider what the world would be like if we actually decided to take that seriously, because it seems like something we should be doing in the 21st century, right? So the forever part is interesting, because that means we've got to do it without petrochemicals, because they're going to run out. So, but that's OK, because the UN, the biggest study the UN has ever done um, in this area, sorry, <laughs> uh, found that, uh, that you, can change, you can use different farming techniques, uh, which substitutes, essentially substitute knowledge and information for petrochemicals uh, or GMOs, and even increasing the yield by up to 100%. Those same techniques focus on the soil. And by focusing on the soil, you, uh, you increase the resilience against flooding and drought. And it, the soil is also an excellent carbon sink. So if we all farmed in this way, you could absorb up to 40% of the world's current CO2 emissions. The good food part means rich in nutrients and energy. Essentially, it means ripe. So if it means ripe, it means frozen or fresh. And fresh means local. So the best place to look are the schools and the hospitals who are sourcing local food and see what happens when they put it on their, on their menus. There's a hospital in Nottingham that has saved 800,000 pounds a year just by sourcing locally, just by taking that decision. And a school, uh, schools in the Food for Life program, who find that their pupil attainment rates are doubling 
just by feeding them good, fresh, local food. And the for everyone part, that's great, because that means that we need a robust economy full of excellent livelihoods so that we can all afford to participate. Local trade stimulates more local trade, and because small local businesses tend to trade with other local businesses. And so it does two to three times the good in an area uh, as, as national trade. And that hospital spending and the school spending, if we put that into the local economy, it can do two to three times the good, beg your pardon, so uh, two to three times the good in the local economy before leaving the area. So it has a much higher impact than it might otherwise think. And all the better farming techniques demand of us more skilled jobs. Uh, those skilled jobs are largely seasonal, so they fit nicely with our aspirations for more blended lifestyles. And because they're active, it means that we're outside that much more. And I'm pretty sure that today would be a lovely day for us all to be outstanding in our field. So the question becomes, how do we make this happen? And what scales does everything work at so that we get the best from everything? 50, more than 50% of farmers in the UK are on Twitter. Every Thursday evening, quite a lot of them converge around a hashtag, AgriChatUK. It regularly trends in the UK, which is to say, it is one of the most popular active conversations happening on Thursday evenings. And that's quite something. Around the world, people are self-organizing around these themes and conversations and teaching each other and learning. And these are the conversations, and these are the tools that help sustainable food systems find the appropriate scales to work at. Here are some of the other companies that are working to help empower people and provide those structures upon which we can grow and rewire the food system. Farmeron. Uh, helps, uh, helps farmers monitor their herd and the, the nutrition and the, the, the food that they're feeding the cattle and thus get better yields. Uh, Buckybox saves 90% of the time it takes to run a farm box scheme. There are others that make, let you buy from local farms directly and so they make the sales and the marketing that much more effective. And then Farm Drop and La Rouge take this much further and then they let customers cluster together and so access wholesale prices which is great because you've got cheaper food, less hassle for the farmers, and you're building a community at the same time. House Bites is great too. What they do is they take people who are ordering takeaways, match them up with chefs cooking at home, and then the whole thing's delivered by local couriers. So everyone's got more choice, better business, and you're making better use of existing resources. So I wanted to see if we could help uh, other companies join up more dots too. And so I set up a sort of dating site for food businesses. But we're trying to learn from the big guys because the big food corporates use connected data and market intelligence to tremendous success to dominate and efficiently dominate the market. Small companies, which comprise about 99% of small of food businesses in, the, in, the, in Europe, find it hard to access that same kind of information. So we ask little questions from all of them, aggregate it, pool it, analyze it, and then push it back as market intelligence so that they can highlight opportunities and find cost-saving collaborations between each other. And because we all do it together, we can do it at a lower cost. Through our work and research, we found that the food system, whilst not exactly broken, is absolutely unprepared and incapable of delivering on the demands that we have of it. Even today, it's not feeding everybody, and it's not going to be able to feed everybody in the future. It's certainly not going to be able to deliver good food for everyone forever. So we need to rewire the system, and data gives us the information that we need to know how to do that, and technology makes it easier to do. Technology makes the complex simple and the invisible visible. <laughs> Good birds. Um, that's lovely, actually, isn't it? Nice birds. Um, so, so it helps us work out where we should have a, where we should have a, where we should open a new local shop, and what hours it should be open, or who should be working together, or where and how can we relocalize supply, or we can look at successful areas and work out why they're successful, and then see whether we can copy them and clone them. And by looking for gaps in uh, gluts and, and differences between demand and supply, there are new business opportunities, so new micro enterprises can start up. And of course, because it's all online and there's tons of data around everything, we can mix it up and 
add in information about sea level rises or gender or income and, and make even more deeper insights. This is just the beginning. And I've only told you about a fraction of what's going on in the world. The technology is new, and society and business haven't even thought about catching up properly yet. And I haven't told you about smartphones that can tell whether your food is organic, or the rise in urban and precision agriculture, or the smart irrigation systems that talk to the weather satellites, but also to the stock control system in the shops. The coming Internet of Things is going to connect 20, some say 50 billion devices to the Internet by 2020. That's going to lead to new levels in transparency and empower us to make change like never before. So, okay, listen, I've been telling you all these stories of lovely, happy, bright, bright, rosy futures where we all live happy lives, fulfilled, healthy, abundant, prosperous, and, and using less resources and generating new resources for new ones. But who's going to be alive in 20 years from now? Hands up. Hands up if you expect to be alive in 20 years from now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, what a depressing crowd. <laughs> okay, was that, was, that, was that everybody? Is everyone happy with the idea that they're going to be alive from 20 years from now? Good, okay. So this, this dreamy utopia that I've been telling you about, where we live a petrochemical-free future, well, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is that by 2033, the two main ingredients of current farming and thus business, current agriculture and thus business as usual are going to have peaked and be in dramatic decline, leading to destabilization of food systems in countries around the world. The reason that this is good news is because you get to be part of the biggest, most exciting, fastest, necessary revolution that this world has ever seen. The bad news in fact, did anyone raise their, not raise their hands? Okay, the bad news is that we're going to miss you, sir. <laughs> okay, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to miss you. <laughs> so we'll, we'll do it all in, in memory of this man. When in 2033 and we reconvene and see, did we do it, did we do it? And hopefully we'll have done it. So, uh, we, can't, we can't slow down the world, but so it is thus more important than ever that we look ahead and decide the route that we want to go. If we have to change all this anyway, and if we're at this moment in history where we're at this peak and we've not yet committed to a route forward, why don't we just do the great thing, do the audacious thing, do the human thing, do the humane thing, and see whether we can make that true. See whether we can create good food for everyone forever. I started working in food because change happens so fast. It renews every year. And every single day, every single one of you has a choice about what you eat and who you buy it from. It creates the cascading change. And every day, we co-create tomorrow. We have so much innovation so much creativity and so much need. Now all we need is for you to understand quite how close we are to making that a reality and make those choices and support those people who are making it happen. Thank you.